What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter. Today we are talking about a topic that I know is on everyone's minds because NaNoWriMo just finished last week, and that topic is revisions. How do I know that you're thinking about revisions right now? Because you probably just finished writing a book, a first draft, and it's probably a hot mess. This is nothing to be ashamed of. All first drafts need a lot of help. Even if you went through all of my organization methods and all my outlining procedures, everything, and were super organized and used Scrivener and made your story matter, even if you did all of that, your story is still gonna need revisions and editing because all stories do. So today I'm going to show you how I revise a novel and turn it into the masterpiece that I intended to create, even if it's currently a hot mess. Now, before we dive into this topic, I just want to introduce you to my glossary of language. Okay, when I use the word revision, I'm talking about making alterations to what you have written. I also use the word edit to mean pretty much the same thing, but editing usually comes later in the process when you are line editing and copy editing. Those are more technical things where you are altering sentence structure and wording and spelling, whereas developmental editing is just another word for revisions with more syllables. <laughs> you might disagree and have a whole different definition of what the word revisions means, but that's what I mean when I say it, just making sure we're all tracking. And then the word rewriting is not even in my vocabulary because I don't rewrite. I never write a second draft because as we talked about before Nano began, that's what outlining is for. However, that does not mean I don't revise my manuscripts. Of course I do. All first drafts need revisions, mine, yours, everyone's. So here is what my revision process looks like. I would highly recommend it to any writer out there, especially if you feel overwhelmed by the idea of revising a hot mess of a manuscript and wish that you just had a more organized step-by-step -step guide to follow. Here it is. Step one, forget about your story. No joke, this is the most important step in order for the whole process to work. You have to forget about your story, not completely, but somewhat. See, when you spend all your time working on a book and then you finish it, you can't just dive right into revisions. That's a recipe for disaster because you're still looking at this story on a granular level. You're still doubting that you wrote it well and the adrenaline of the writing process is still messing with your ability to look at your writing objectively. And looking at your writing objectively is essential to making good revisions. Think about how different you would feel if you were helping your friend revise their book, which you have no idea what it's about, you've never read it before, versus revising the book that you just finished writing, like, 10 minutes ago. The huge difference here is that you don't know your friend's story inside and out. And that unfamiliarity helps you to be a good judge of what needs revising in a story. So when I finish writing a book, I usually set it aside and I don't even look at it for at least three months, sometimes longer depending on my goals for that story. Then when I open up that Scrivener file again, I feel like I'm stepping into an unfamiliar book or at least a less familiar book. Which leads us to step two, make a revision guide. Here's the thing, if you jump into your manuscript after three months of it just sitting on the shelf and you not looking at it and you just jump right in, you're like, okay, let's revise. It's not gonna end well. You need a guide. You need some kind of sense of direction. You need a method to your madness or else you will go mad. So I begin every book revision process like this, whether it is a book I wrote a long time ago or a book that I just finished writing and set aside for a few months. I take a notebook or my Scrivener project and I basically start interviewing myself and asking myself questions about my intentions with this story. Here are the questions that I ask. What do I love about this story? It's important to ask this question first because as the revision process goes on, there are going to be frustrations moments, there are going to be moments when you're like, I just want to throw in the towel, this story is not good enough. But if you make a list before you go into revisions of all the things that you love about this story and reasons that you're passionate about it, 
that will keep you going. That will keep you motivated and pushing through the hard times and turning this book into a masterpiece. Don't limit yourself with this list. Write down as many things as you can think of, everything that you love about this story. This is seriously so helpful because you're going to return to this list later whenever you are doubting your story. Next question, what scenes am I most looking forward to revisiting? This is kind of like the first question, but with this question, you're going to list out the actual scenes that you had the most fun writing or that you enjoyed the most or had the biggest emotional impact on you. Basically, the scenes that you can't wait to read and that you've been forcing yourself not to read these long months as you've set your book on the shelf. This is also a really important list to return to because it will help you see that there is gold in your story even if there are some scenes that need a little more help. What exactly are the problems I'm afraid I'll encounter in this story? So if you're anything like me, you have some really specific doubts floating around in your head during the writing process. This is the place where you're going to write down those doubts. Not anything general like, I'm afraid this whole story sucks. That's not helpful for anyone. <laughs> Instead, try to get really specific, like I'm afraid the ending is rushed, or I'm afraid my side characters don't have enough impact on the protagonist's story. Clarifying your doubts before you go into revisions will help you to see if there is any validity in these doubts. How do I want my reader to feel when they finish this story? It's really important to set your intention for how you want your reader to feel when they finish reading your story. Because even if you had like a really clear idea of what feeling you wanted to impart while you're writing the story, that feeling may not have come through as clear as you wanted it to. So just take a minute to clarify this before jumping into revisions. What is the very clear message that I want to teach my reader? You should have figured this out before you even started outlining your story, in which case if you did, you will just copy and paste your story's truth, as we called it, um, as the answer to this question. If you never figured this out, now is the second best time to do it. Ask yourself, what is the truth I want to scream from the rooftops? And then ask yourself, how am I screaming this truth from the rooftops with this story? Try to encapsulate it all in one sentence. Protagonist at the beginning versus protagonist at the end. This is my favorite way to test the strength of your character development. By making two short lists, you can easily quickly see how or if your character has transformed as a result of their journey. Under protagonist at the beginning, make a list of traits and beliefs that they have at the opening of your story, and then under protagonist at the end, make a list of traits and beliefs they have when the curtain falls on your story. Remember, this is your intention for your protagonist's character development. It's not necessarily what you succeeded in writing into your messy first draft. This comparison list thing is going to serve as a guide to help you see if you actually accomplished the character transformation that you were aiming for. Okay, once you're finished with all this fabulous note taking and guide making, it's time to move on to step three. Go forth and revise. Now that you have a very specific guide, it should seem less overwhelming to jump into the revision process. After all, you now know what you're looking forward to, the character transformation that your protagonist should have, the theme that you're trying to scream from the rooftops, and the feeling that you want to leave your reader with at the end of the book. Having that sense of direction is way better than just diving into your manuscript without any guide or any questions or you don't even know what you're doing. Now, I would recommend printing off your manuscript so that you can take your time reading it with minimal eye strain. That's what I do, I print off the whole thing put it in a binder with my notebook for that project where I'll write any notes that don't fit in the manuscript itself. For me, that's the biggest difference between the revision process and the editing process, note taking. <laughs> in the revision process, I take tons of notes. I ask myself questions and jot down ideas that come to me while I'm reading. Sometimes I just circle problem area and write, this needs help, <laughs> and I'll return to it later and possibly ask advice from my critique partners if I'm really stumped. I like to take notes and write down my thoughts and then review those notes later when I'm putting the revisions into my Scrivener project. Rather than stop 
and try to fix it while I'm reading because this can just kill my momentum and make me feel stuck. I find that it's better to just make a note and come back later when you have more perspective on your story as a whole. During revisions, I might do a little bit of line editing, but remember this is not my line edit because once I add those new portions, you guessed it, I'll print off the revised manuscript and bind it again and line edit with more of a focus on sentence structure and wording. But that's another video for another time. So there's my revision process start to finish. Let's recap real quick. Step one, forget about your story. Set it aside for at least a month or longer if you can. Distance creates a better objective perspective for the revision process. Step two, make a revision guide. Ask yourself these questions. What do I love about this story? What scenes am I most looking forward to revisiting? What exactly are the problems I'm afraid I will encounter in this story? How do I want my reader to feel when they finish this story? What is the very clear message I want to teach the reader? Protagonist at the beginning versus protagonist at the end. Step three, go forth and revise. Take your time reading and make lots of notes. Ask yourself questions, but don't stop too long or you'll lose momentum. Remember, revising a manuscript is hard work and it takes time. So expect that you'll run into some tricky areas, some problem areas, and it won't always be smooth and fast, but it will be worth it. Whenever you're feeling bummed about your story, just return to that list of things that you love about your story and remind yourself why you are passionate about this. This process works wonders for me and I hope it does the same for you. Now, time for you to talk to me. Comment below and tell me what does your revision process look like? Does it look anything like mine? And if you try out this revision process or even just the question answer revision guide thing, let me know how it went. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Also, be sure to check out my Patreon because that's where we go beyond videos and take storytelling to the next level. The Patreon community is not only the best way to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, but also connect personally with me and get better guidance on your story. So go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons and check out all the awesome extra content that I've made for you. Until next week, my friend, happy revising and rock on. Sure.